All right guys, what's up? My name's Cody Groom. Today we have an E92 M3. Personally, I love the E92 M3, I own one, and the more the merrier in my opinion. So today's a little different though. It's a track focused E92 M3 build. I thought it'd be cool to showcase this one just because of the simple fact that it's fully gutted, it's street legal, and this one's really as clean as it gets. Now you guys are gonna hate me for this, but there is no driving shots in this video. Unfortunately, because of everything with the coronavirus, we can't shoot shots of it driving. This video was actually shot back in November. I felt like this is a video that I really wanted to sh show you guys, get out to the world. And especially at a time where everyone's sitting down watching stuff, I wanted to give you guys something to take you out of the real world. So I hope you guys enjoy the United 2 M3. My name's Cody Groom. I spend my time showing you guys amazing cars and the stories behind them. Damn. It's about the people, places, and of course, cars. Welcome to the build. So Ryan Marks, the guy that I met up with to shoot this video, actually works for Apex Wheels. So being part of Apex is a pretty broad knowledge of track builds and, and different different resources to build out this car cool so under the fender arch and behind the wheel is really kind of the crown jewel of of the car uh, all the good stuff is essentially hidden we'll start with our our brakes it's the ap racing pro 5000 cp 9668 caliper it's a 372 millimeter rotor so aside from the extra cooling capacity and the less rotational mass that you get by going with a kit like this, uh, they house 25 millimeter thick endurance pads. These are tremendously thick pads, which is great. And they evacuate out the back of the caliper with ease through retaining clips. Uh, moving to the suspension, we've got JRZ 1132 motorsport grade dampers uh, with external reservoirs. I went with JRZs because I've ran them, gosh, on countless vehicles over the years. To me, they're really the pinnacle uh, in the suspension game. They have such a rich heritage in motorsport. They've really proven themselves to make a, a premium product. But ultimately, I like the ability to be able to, to build my own kit. The JRZ damper is really just the, the centerpiece. It's uh, where most of the technology is. It's what impacts the suspension the most out of any of the components. This is our JRZ uh, 1132 Motorsport Dampers, uh, our Hyperco main spring. Uh, what you can't really quite see up here is the Genesis spring guide that divides the helper spring and the main spring. And we've got our, our helper spring up top right underneath our adjustable camber plate. I like the fact that I could build something that was going to work best for my use. You just have to recognize that not all enthusiasts are the same when it comes to their priorities for a car. For me, this allowed me to really get to a comfortable state and control, you know, the movement, braking zones, and just have a lot of confidence in my setup. This is the Motorsport line, which is the pinnacle of, of what JRZ offers. It allows you to get really granular with your adjustments. And you can set it to their factory settings out of the box. And for honestly, 90% of the drivers out there, it's gonna be fantastic. Um, but it allows guys like myself who really like to geek out and get involved with the car to evolve and progress and change things depending on track climate, the compound you're using, uh, and the track that you're going to essentially. In my opinion, this is a really solid setup because it's really looking at the core fund fundamentals of what an E92 M3 is. It's a track car. It's not a super fast straight line car. And just modifying suspension, all these, these key components that add to the drivability without adding more power, I have a huge respect for that because I feel like the engine in this car is, is already amazing. As much as I love a supercharged M3, I don't necessarily feel, feel like it always needs it, especially in a track environment. All right, so moving to the, the rear of the car, uh, there's a lot of similarities, of course. One uh, major thing to point out would be that the front is a, a true coilover. You have the, the spring over the damper. Everybody is, is pretty familiar with that. In the rear, depending on the application, it is typically divorced on an M3. So what that means is that the spring sits inboard on the control arm, not on the, the rear dampers. There are some situations where if you have a caged car like mine actually, and it's reinforced, that you actually can go with a true rear coilover. In this instance, we went with a divorce setup. Uh, so we have the, the spring inboard on the control arm. Like the front, it's a JRZ 1132. The external reservoirs, you can see the plumbing here. 
They're gonna run up uh, through the, the chassis. We can get to the external reservoirs in a moment. We have the ground control adjustable end links, the Hyperco two and a quarter main springs, ground control articulating weight jacks, and then the SPL uh, tow arm, adjustable tow arm. Inside of the car, I would say that the inspiration was really like a, a lot of people are familiar with the Porsche Cup car. Uh, it is iconic uh, in terms of uh, cars and motorsport. And I've always appreciated how less is more, uh, how clean everything is. Uh, everything has a purpose. And if there's anything else in excess, it doesn't belong. So that was kind of the theme for the inside of this car. I also feel like, you know, clean is fast, whether it's on the racetrack, you know, your clean lines and braking technique. I think that also holds true in terms of the car itself. Uh, the cleaner the car is, the easier it is to tech and prepare and, and ensure that everything is in working order and is safe for you to go out. And then also to, to come back from a track day and, and really, you know, pour over the car and make sure everything's in good working order and that uh, you're ready to go out next time. So that really meant stripping everything down to the, the bare chassis. And I wanted to, to do it right and have kind of that, that finished look and that meant pulling the dash, every component, all wiring, stereo, air conditioning, you name it, it's gone. And what we did is essentially put the car back together only with the bare necessities. So uh, wiring is done in a, a way that, you know, it's quite hidden, it's out of the way and it's well kept. All right, so for the seat, one of the biggest safety aspects, getting the right seat. And it's also to make sure that you're, you know, you fit well everybody's a little bit different in terms of their shape, their size. You have to sit in a bunch and, and after sitting in a lot, I came up with uh, the Racetech 4009. Uh, this is in like this the stealth covering, uh, which suits my OCD all black. Beyond the seat, we have the six point harnesses. Right now we have the stock steering wheel. The plan is to, to swap that out for a detachable wheel. Behind me, we have a half cage that was done by TC Design uh, in Northern California. Right now, this car is not built for a specific race class, but I wanted to ensure that I was building something that I could use in the future, uh, and I wouldn't have to start over, you know, on a, on a new build. So, I've been at a half cage right now, so that I can drive it on the street. And we built it with the idea that I could I could build the front half at a later date. The rear is built as if it was going to be a full cage. The trunk has just uh, Terry springs to open and close. That allows us to get in and out of the trunk pretty quickly with minimal effort. And we've removed all the wiring and mechanical mechanisms. Um, so we need that to, to keep the trunk in place. That pretty much wraps up the interior. We have some plans to do some other items to finish things off. Uh, I really want to get some carbon fiber door panels, likely installing a carbon fiber uh, dash here uh, with a battery cut off. Uh, gonna be installing a fire suppression system to protect the investment just in case things get hot in here. And then we're gonna get a, uh, a AIM data display. And the idea is to install that here in the factory cubby location. Uh, just again, for that kind of OE factory race car look. That pretty much sums up the interior of the car. really cool because everything on this build is made for a purpose. Now, the engine is completely untouched, but we have JRZ suspension, we have AP racing brakes, we have some really high-end mods that I think take this car to another level on, on a functional level.
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Leave a comment if you got something to say, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.